Hello everybody and welcome back to another Mountain View Soap Co. video. My name is Hannah and today we are making a chicken soap. Before I get into today's video though, I wanted to share with you that the website has gotten a new update. It looks awesome. I have been working on this for about a month and a half now and I really, really like the way that it is laid out now. It looks a little bit more cohesive and aesthetically pleasing. You learn a little bit more about me and are able to shop all of the important things while also getting to everything that you need to get to. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to let you know that this chicken soap that we're going to be making today is going to be available next Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern. I am going to get everything on the website a little bit early though, so you may not have to actually wait ex that exact long, but that is going to be when the official email goes out um, on all of the products. Okay, if you have a moment, head over to the Mountain View Soap Co. website and check it out. I would love to hear what you think about the new website compared to what the old one looks like. It's very different, but I am a really big fan. Okay, let's get into today's video. So I made the soap again on TikTok Live, and that's why the lighting is a little bit different from what my normal videos were. And I ran into some technical difficulties with my secondary camera that I'll get into once we start uh, topping and frosting the soap. I'm actually going to chat with you about what I'm doing. So right here I am pouring off about a third of my base soap batter and I'm going to color that brown. If you guys were around my Instagram last April, I did make this soap for the spring collection and I decided to bring it back this year because everybody loved it so much last year and based on the reactions from social media this year I am thinking of actually keeping this soap in stock year round. It is such a super cute soap. It's simple. Um, I'm not 100% determined if I'm going to do that yet or not. It, it's going to depend on how quickly these guys go but if you love it let me know in the comments so that I can make more. The only thing that bothers me with soap making is that there is a cure. I haven't been able to figure out a way to do everything properly so that there's no wait time in between when you see a soap and when the soap is available. Um, and I don't really love the idea of a pre-order because I don't, I, I like to ship packages as quick as, as I possibly can. Obviously, my personal life gets in the way sometimes but um, even more so lately but I really am trying now to ship within three days three business days um, and to add a zero on that and make it 30 days it really is like not a big that's not what I'm looking to do <laughs> so uh, we'll see I am going to try possibly a pre-order for a gnome collection in the near future but um just to give it a try out and see what you guys think and all of that stuff. It's just hard because I have so much on the site that's available for purchase now that when somebody orders something and then they order it with a pre-order, it's a whole thing. And Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about the soap. So I poured off the rest of my batter into three different colors. We have a light green, um, a light green mixed with a little bit of titanium dioxide, and then a dark green. And I like having that bit of color change just to share some sort of like a texture and technique and dimension to the soap. It doesn't actually give you a texture, but texture look wise, um, because if it was just green, it would be a really, really, really simple soap. And I also waited a little bit for the soap to to set up before I poured it. It actually wasn't intentional, but I'm glad that I did because I feel like if I wouldn't have, it would have been a little bit too fluid, um, which is good. The fragrance oil works very, very well. It's scented in fresh cut grass from Nature's Garden, and this is the same scent that I used last year. So if you've gotten my chicken soap before, this is literally the same exact design, same exact everything. The only thing that's improved is my technique overall and the fact that I have been growing and making soap and getting better <laughs> for the last year pretty much. Um, my chickens, I can see a difference in how they were made. My soap dough technique has gotten way better, um, which is really exciting to see and I'm also really very excited to um, 
at least see improvement because I don't remake many of my soaps and if I do it's on like a seasonal basis so this is like the first year that I've really remade soaps that I've actually enjoyed over the last year and it's been nice to see the little bit of um progress. So what I'm doing now is I'm piping some grass frosting. This frosting set up super duper quick. I did put fragrance in it but it was just really warm. It set up so fast and also the piping tip which I always forget I need to pipe this a little bit more fluid is so small that it takes a long time to pipe. I've sped this up to 450% in editing and it's still a really really long clip. So one of the things that I decided to change from the last chicken soap was I wanted to add a little bit more height. So I actually went three levels with this frosting and it took me forever and my hand hurt so bad after it but it ended up looking really good this way and it actually gives a little bit of texture on the top which you'll see when I cut it. Let me talk to you a little bit about my technical get difficulties. So I bought a nice fancy camera called the DJI Pocket 2. I was really excited about it. I spent $540 on it and was really hoping that it would help me be able to record everything. So the way that I have my setup now for TikTok Lives is I have my personal phone live on TikTok. I have my YouTube camera hooked to my window and then I wanted a secondary or third camera to record TikToks and Reels for social media so that I would have all the content possible. I wasn't losing any sort of anything because the TikTok live um, overall isn't very good quality wise so I really wanted to make sure that I had something that was going to be good quality. So I had used this camera once before and it worked fine, but to this night that I was making this soap, it was not working at all. It was glitching, the screen was black, it was such a pain in the butt. I spent half of this video actually, or like half of the time making this soap, messing with it. And it's funny because this soap actually was... Um, frosted and made in two different days because I had to return the camera to Amazon and I went to Best Buy and I got a phone instead. So what it's actually recording on for Instagram and TikTok is a Samsung S10. I have a Samsung S10 Plus and I love it. I've always loved the camera. I always love Samsung. I'm not an iPhone person. I do have an iPad but it's the only device that I have from Apple. I'm just not a huge Apple fan. So um, that is, I went with that because I knew the camera was going to be good and I'm so glad I did. It has honestly more times than not been a situation where I've picked it up and been like god I'm really glad that I that I decided to use this phone um as for the DJI camera honestly I can't recommend it because it didn't work for me it glitched and I just was not a fan of learning a brand new interface it was a little complicated to use for Android users if you have an iPhone maybe it would work better for you but that's my technical difficulties here is the slow-mo of this adorable soap, and there is a little bit of uh, color discoloration just because of the green mica. Totally normal. It's 100% light green, kind of like more grass-colored green now. Um, that's just, it's, it's totally normal for a green to do that. It did it last time as well. I didn't end up gelling the frosting on this soap, though, which is why it took a little bit longer to fully discolor. Normally, by the time that I'm cutting this soap, it would have completely colored back or discolored back to its original color. But because of the gelling and the mishaps with everything, I just didn't, I didn't have time. <laughs> and I didn't want to put the soap back in the oven to gel just for the frosting. So this is what the uh, bar is going to look like on the inside. We have that really pretty height on top with a little bit of texture, the chicken, the eggs of course, and then the dirt with the different colored grass in there. I am obsessed with this bar. There's only so much I can really say about it because it is just 
it's very simple in my opinion, um, but also it has a lot of moving parts. I was chatting on TikTok Live and saying that I really want to make maybe a pig in mud soap and have a pig on its back and be really cute. Um, and I'm also thinking about bringing my cow soap back. I have another cow baby shower soap that I'm going to be finishing today. Hopefully, I have 128 mini ears to make, <laughs> so we'll see how far I get on those. Um, but I've been wanting to remake the OG cow soap that kind of started all of the baby shower stuff. Uh, I'm excited about all of the things coming, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think about the new website. If you have a moment, head over there and check it out. In the meantime, that's going to do it for me today. We made a chicken soap in 10 minutes, and obviously it did not actually take that long. It took me two days to do. Oh, and before I go, I know I said I wasn't doing question of the day anymore, but I can't think of a this or that for this soap. So question of the day, what is your favorite breakfast meal? What's your favorite breakfast item? For me, it has to be bacon and pancakes, but the pancakes have to have peanut butter on them and Vermont maple syrup because I am a Vermonter. Okay. Can't wait to hear what you have in the comments. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. I will see you here on Thursday to show you the really cute spring gnome soap I've made. And then we'll have the release this weekend. Okay.